This is a build log for a coaxial contra-rotating RC plane motor that uh, I built. It has a parts list and some performance measurements and recommendations. You can see where I got the idea if you go to YouTube and put in uh, MCLAY and then contra-rotating. You'll see where um, another fellow has done this uh, before me. So here's the parts list on the right and a rough drawing on the left. The two brown areas are the stators, the two blue areas are the rotors, and the yellow pieces are the ones that need to be machined. The yellow piece in the center is just a triangular motor mount. The yellow piece to the right is a bit more involved. It's a, it's a prop mount that has a fore and an aft bearing. That prop mount has to be concentric with the blue uh, blue rotor. And then there's a, um, a thrust bearing that goes up between the two um, propellers. In my configuration, this is going to be a pusher motor. I use the DT750 uh, motors from Hobby King. They're only about $12 a piece and they, they seem to work pretty well. Here the original motors have been disassembled and the prop shafts have been removed. The new long prop shaft is secured to the rear rotor only. This is that machined prop adapter showing the bearing that's inserted into the front part of it, as well as the lock nuts that are required to prevent um, the prop from, from getting loose because it's, uh, it's going to be spinning clockwise. This is the rear view of that prop adapter showing the bearing that's inserted into the aft end. It also shows six screw holes for attachment to the rotor. Actually, I think my machinist buddy must have sneezed and uh, we'll call three of those practice holes. We really only use the other three. This shows a larger and more useful motor mount sandwiched between the two original motor mount bases. I removed the bearing from the back side of that front stator because it isn't necessary anymore. And here the prop adapter is being secured to that forward rotor. And here's the front rotor and uh, prop adapter ready to go. Now the stators are fed back into their original motor mounts and secured, and the rear rotor with the long shaft is inserted through both. And here we are with the finished motor. So I had that long 200 millimeter prop shaft that had to be cut off and I thought, well, before I cut it, let's just do some tests. I've always been curious to know what effect the distance between the props has on the thrust and on the noise that the motor makes. So um, I devised a test. I'm not going to read through these because you can read it on your own, um, but um, basically um, did some measurements at different distances between props, recorded the, the um, data, and um, I'll show you what happened. So to measure the thrust, I got some, um, some drawer slides and sawed them off and then uh, mounted an aluminum extrusion onto the slides so that the whole mechanism could um, go fore and aft with minimal friction. And then to measure the thrust, I attached a small scale to the front part of the slide since this was set up as a, a pusher motor. For the measurement of the noise, I used a cell phone 36 inches from the side of the motor and used software that's listed under the procedure slide. This part's boring, but uh, I did want to point out that I sucked a tape measure into the front prop at one point and chipped it, so I had to replace it. And unfortunately, I didn't have the exact same prop to replace it with, but I think the data is still pretty valid. So this slide summarizes all the data and shows the uh, measurement of the noise and decibels on the left y-axis and the thrust and kilograms on the right y-axis and then the distance between the propeller hubs on the x-axis at the bottom. Um, it's interesting and surprising that the upper and lower curves, which represent 100% throttle and 50% throttle respectively, are pretty flat. There's not much of a difference in the thrust regardless of the distance between the propellers. Likewise, the central two curves are, are relatively flat and represent the noise that the motor makes. Um, not much of a difference uh, dependent on the space between the propeller hubs, with the one exception of a slight increase at 100% throttle going from the um, 
roughly 32 millimeters down to 27 millimeters. The accuracy of the raw numbers is unknown, but the reproducibility of the, of the data uh, is very high. Um, thrust and noise levels remain relatively constant despite varying the distance between the propellers. I had a little problem about halfway through where the tape measure got sucked into the forward prop and chipped the blade. I didn't have a replacement from that manufacturer, but I, I had a different propeller that had the same size and, and the same pitch. And when I substituted that, the um, the thrust curves and the and the noise curves didn't take a jump. So I think the data is okay. Uh, it'd be interesting to do this test again with a two blade prop and see what happens. And also maybe uh, do the test just measuring the efficiency of the contra rotating motor setup versus two single motors to see uh, if there's more of, a, of a, an electrical demand or less of an electrical demand. Uh, I did test after this uh, initial test was done, I did test the uh, thrust of the individual motors run uh, one at a time. And when they are summed, the total thrust was ident almost identical to the uh, thrust of the coaxial motor. Contra rotating props are fascinating, and I hope that you build one to put into your plane or your boat or whatever it is you're making. Thanks for watching the video.